Hey everyone, this is Teresa from Base 10 Montessori and today I want to show you one of my favorite works in the Montessori classroom. This is called the Addition Snake Game. The Addition Snake Game builds on the Golden Bead System, the Colored Bead System, and then we're going to introduce a new Black and White Bead System. So the child has already worked with the golden bead system for the decimal system lesson. So they've done addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division with the golden beads before this game. And they've worked with the colored beads with the bead chains in linear counting and skip counting. Now to start the snake game, we want to introduce the black and white beads. And we want to go through and we're going to count each one and show the child that they're really just like these colored beads, right? So this unit bead right here is just like the red unit bead. After five, you can point out to them that we're gonna count to five and then the sixth bead is white. So each of these is five. Then the seven bead has two white. The eight bead has three white. The nine bead has four white. And the reason why we're doing that is just because it makes it a little bit easier to count. So we're gonna make it in this inverted triangle right here on the corner of our mat. So what we want to do first is just get a bunch of colored beads. It doesn't really matter how many. Now some people really like to make sure that when you do the snake game the first time it's perfect. I don't really worry about that too much. I'm going to make this kind of a shorter snake because I want to make sure you can see all of it on this video. So I'm not going to do a very long snake today. So we're gonna get all of these colored beads out. We're gonna make kind of a rainbow snake, right? And that's why it's called the snake game because we're making a snake. So you feel free to make it as snake-like as you would like. There's no right or wrong. And there we go, there's our snake. Now to start with, we're gonna grab our little counter device. This just helps the child count. Now, if you don't have one of these, you can take those little uh, plastic things off of bread wrappers and use those. They work just fine too. I've used those in classrooms because these tend to get lost a lot and you don't wanna keep buying them. So be innovative, use what's around you. You don't have to have anything fancy for this. So before we start this game, I'm gonna tell the child, you know what, we have this beautiful rainbow snake right here. And we wanna turn it into a golden snake. I'm going to show you how to do that. We're simply going to count to 10 and every time we get to 10 we're going to say stop. And when we stop something's going to happen and I'll show you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, stop. Now, since we've already worked with the golden bead system, the child knows that when we get to 10, something special happens. And let's see if they remember what that is. What happens when we get to 10? We have to stop and exchange. So here's our golden bead, right? There are 10 golden beads here. So we're gonna put our golden bead right here. And let's see. We have 10 right here, but there's how many left over? One, two, three. Can we just break it off? We have three left over, what do we do with that? Well, that's when we go to our black and white beads. See our black and white beads, they're our placeholders, so we don't have to break our colored beads. So that works out pretty well, doesn't it? So now we're gonna take our colored beads away. Pick them up. We're just gonna put them in the black and white box right here. Let's make a little bit of room for our placeholder. Now we have part of our snake turning golden. Let's get our counter and start counting again. We're going to start with the first black bead. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So here we go. Let's get our golden bead. And there are two left over. Let's get our placeholder here. So we don't need our placeholder for three anymore because it's part of the golden bead. And we don't need our colored bead anymore because we've got our golden bead and our placeholder. So let's start counting, starting with our black bead. One, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Do you see that? We went past the blue and we just kept counting. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Stop, right? So now we've got all of these together. Let's grab our extra 10 here. Look at that, we only have one left over. So we're gonna use our one placeholder. So our colored beads get to go back in. And our placeholder is gonna go back into our inverted triangle, which is starting to look a little sloppy. So maybe I'll straighten it up. It does get a little bit messy. Okay, so let's see here. We have one, two, three, four. Oh no, we can only do four. We didn't make a full golden snake. Let's see here. We're gonna need the four. We can't leave any of the colored beads out. Your snake needs to end with either a golden bead or a black and white. So that's why I like to show an imperfect snake to begin with, because most likely when the child is doing this on their own, they're not gonna make a perfect snake. So I really wanna show them what happens if they don't make a perfect 10 at the very end. So we just leave it right there. Now we have all of our colored beads in here. So I'm gonna show you how to do the first control of error. This is how we check to see if we did the work correctly. So I'm gonna put that down. And I'm going to move my golden beads from my snake down here. And then I'm going to take all my colored beads out. These are the ones we used to make the snake at the beginning. And if we did it right, they should match up perfectly. So let's see, we have 10 beads right here. So let me see here. We need Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there's a nine. How many does it take to make 10? Nine plus what? One, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. These both are 10, they match. So we can match our colored beads to our golden beads. Let's see what else we have. Now, this is where it starts to get a little tricky, right? We have to look for the correct combinations. Let's do one, two, three, four, five, six. We have six. What do we need to make a 10? And hopefully the child has been working on their addition so that they know six plus four is 10, right? So now let's see. Let's use this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we have seven here. Now, what combination do we need to make 10? We need a three, don't we? But we don't have a three. We have a two, but that's not enough, is it? So what we need to do is we have to go in here and we have to exchange. I have a five and I can break this five into different combinations. So let's say we have a two and a three together make five, right? One, two, three, four, five is the same as one, two, three, four, five. So I'll put my five back. I've exchanged it for this combination. And now let's see if we can do it. Seven and three is 10. Now we have this leftover one that didn't make a perfect golden 10, but that's okay because it still matches with what's left over. We have four here and one, two, three, four. So this is called the control of error. This is how we know that we did the work correctly. We can check our work. We can make our rainbow snake. We can turn it into a golden snake and then we can check it and see if everything matches up. And remember, if you don't have quite the right combination, it's okay to go into your extras and find a different combination that will work. You just have to exchange it for a combination that will make the perfect 10. So what is the purpose of this work? 
Well, the purpose of this work is to help the child become more abstract in doing addition. Before this, we've been very concrete with our work. We've done the stamp game, we've done the decimal system, and we've done linear counting and skip counting. Now we really want the child to start memorizing math facts. We really want the child to understand what are all the different combinations of 10. So this really just gives a very concrete way of understanding what combinations make 10. There are different variations of the snake game. There is a different way to do this and a different control of error. And I can do that in a different video if you're interested. So if you wanna see the other variations, just let me know in the comments down below. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.